welcome to Asian Quick Take, I am Jacob. On April 14th, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov stated that the global process of de-dollarization has already begun. While the process is currently not happening at a fast pace, it is bound to accelerate, and this trend is irreversible. The United States and other countries have improperly and severely abused their position in the global economy, forcing other countries, especially Russia, to face illegal unilateral sanctions. It is widely recognized that sanctions are a dead end and not a solution by many countries and politicians. Recently, many countries around the world have been advancing their efforts towards currency settlement in their own currency and reduced their holdings of U.S. bonds and other U.S. dollar-denominated assets. The main reason for the increasing popularity of de-dollarization is the changing political and economic situation in the world. Some countries are reducing their dependence on the U.S. dollar for their own financial security, as well as seeking alternative trading currencies for economic and trade benefits. For a long time, the U.S. dollar has been the most important currency for international trade settlement, financial markets, and foreign exchange reserves. However, the international monetary system based on the U.S. dollar is facing challenges as more and more countries or economies promote de-dollarization policies through innovative cross-border payment settlement mechanisms, bilateral currency agreements, and diversified foreign exchange reserve management. This month, the Indian Ministry of External Affairs issued a statement saying that India and Malaysia have agreed to settle their trade in Indian rupees, which means that in addition to other currency settlement models, trade between India and Malaysia can now be settled in Indian rupees. Earlier, Brazilian President Lula and Argentine President Fernandez announced that the two countries will work together to create a common currency for the Latin American region and invite other countries in the region to join in order to promote regional trade and reduce dependence on the US dollar. The global de-dollarization movement can be broadly divided into three aspects. First, increasing the use of non-dollar currencies in international trade settlement arrangements. For example, Brazil and ASEAN countries are considering settling trade in their own currencies. Iraq has allowed the use of the RMB to settle trade with China, and Saudi Arabia has expressed an openness to settling trade in currencies other than the US dollar. Second, reducing holdings of U.S. assets such as U.S. Treasury bonds. The proportion of foreign investors holding U.S. Treasuries peaked at around 43% during the 2008 financial crisis and has since fallen continuously, reaching 23.6% at the end of March 2023. Third, central banks of various countries are achieving de-dollarization by diversifying their reserve assets. Data shows that the U.S. dollar's share of global foreign exchange reserves has fallen from 71% in 1999 to 58% at the end of 2022. The main reason for the rising trend of de-dollarization is the changing global political and economic situation. In recent years, the rise of American nationalism and populism has led to protectionist trade policies and frequent trade disputes. The U.S. has weaponized the dollar system and frequently imposed trade protectionist measures and financial sanctions on other countries, such as the U.S.'s financial sanctions against Iran and Russia. This behavior has greatly weakened the credibility of the U.S. dollar and triggered concerns from many countries about the safety of using the dollar and the possibility of being subject to U.S. sanctions. In addition, as the East rises and the West declines trend in the world economy gradually becomes clearer, the contradiction between the U.S. dollar's status and the U.S.'s economic strength becomes more prominent. The economic strength and status of emerging market countries are constantly increasing, and these countries are proposing new demands for international trade currencies. Therefore, some countries are reducing their dependence on the U.S. dollar, seeking alternative trading currencies, and thus forming the trend of de-dollarization. Over-reliance on the U.S. dollar can lead to economic and financial crises in non-U.S. economies. On the one hand, when the U.S. loosens its monetary policy, a large amount of hot money flows into non-U.S. economies, leading to asset bubbles. 
Then, when the U.S. tightens its monetary policy, non-U.S. economies are susceptible to capital outflows, currency devaluation, bursting asset bubbles, and even sovereign debt crises. On the other hand, the U.S. can use its long-arm jurisdiction to impose unreasonable sanctions on non-U.S. economies, affecting the macroeconomic and financial stability of non-U.S. economies. The adjustment of U.S. monetary policy often disrupts the exchange rate and liquidity of non-U.S. economies through the transmission of international capital flows, impacting the economic development and policy independence of non-U.S. economies. In 2020, the outbreak of the pandemic led to the U.S. adopting loose monetary and fiscal policies, coupled with severe inflation, resulting in a decline in the value of U.S. dollar assets. Since the change in the situation in Ukraine in 2022, the U.S. and Europe's sanctions against Russia have also prompted non-U.S. economies to reflect on the safety of U.S. dollar assets, which has accelerated the process of de-dollarization. De-dollarization has exposed the shortcomings of the Bretton Woods system. The current global financial asset trading is facing an intensifying contradiction between the expanding financial asset bubble and the limited U.S. dollar currency supply. Forty years ago, the rapid expansion of global trade volume and the contradiction between the inadequate U.S. dollar supply tied to gold caused the collapse of the Bretton Woods system. Today, a new problem has emerged, the rapid expansion of the global financial asset bubble and the contradiction between the limited U.S. dollar supply under national credit constraints and the consequences of this contradiction are becoming apparent, which poses a challenge to the allocation of major asset classes. In the short term, the U.S. dollar will still dominate the global currency market, which is determined by the international transaction usage inertia formed by the stock of global U.S. dollar transactions. However, with the strengthening of the economic power of other countries and changes in the international financial system, the necessity and stability of U.S. dollar dominance will be weakened. In the future, as the world's economic and political situation changes dramatically, the state of weakened U.S. dollar dominance will accelerate. The change in U.S. dollar dominance will not happen overnight but will be a long-term evolutionary process. The situation in Ukraine in 2022 revealed the contradictions and conflicts in global geopolitical and economic relations since the subprime crisis, as well as the geopolitical nature of the international monetary system dominated by the U.S. dollar and followed by the euro. As an international currency with global public goods attributes, if the standard for use is based on geopolitical relations, it will inevitably bring about changes to the existing international monetary system, and global currencies will enter the era of geopolitical competition. It's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to support me. See you next time.